Tonight on the MTN 430 News on the streets. If we don't do something now, we can't be crying about it in a year. Downtown businesses look to the city to take action as they say a growing problem is only getting worse. Plus, the fallout continues. Well, right now, we need to come together and unify, and that's what this is all about. The race for the next Speaker of the House heats up. We'll break down the candidates and a heart of gold. 30 years of getting CPR certified year after year. It sticks. A wife's quick actions help save her husband's life. We'll hear their incredible story of survival. The MTN News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the 430 News. I'm Andrea Lutz. Downtown business owners are speaking out tonight surrounding a growing number of homeless camps popping up. Now those business owners say it's impacting their work. The owners of Kirk's Grocery, then an art gallery that is nearby to the thrift store located near the rescue mission, say the homeless issue has only gotten worse. Some say the block is even starting to show signs of urban camping by living in vehicles, which has also become a problem in other cities like Bozeman and Missoula. The owners fear what will happen if the city doesn't step in. Um, people don't feel safe. They feel like they're getting um, panhandled too when they come down here. And really it's just, um, it's a big city problem that we're not prepared for. But when you talk about that area specifically, um, <clears throat> with having the, the rescue mission down there, um, the homeless shelter, um, that when you have a service that is provided to individuals that are in need, it's gonna draw them to that area. We did reach out to the Billings Police Department about the complaints. They say officers are patrolling the area on a daily basis, enforcing a non-camping ordinance. Officials say while they understand the frustration, these things take time to solve. Well, more money is heading to the Montana Department of Justice to test rape kits related to cold case investigations. The $2.1 million grant will fund three positions related to Montana DOJ's sexual assault kit initiative, a cold case investigator, a crime analyst, and a coordinator. And it will also provide overtime for forensic scientists at the state crime lab, as well as fund renovation of kit storage for police agencies to preserve evidence. With this funding, the SACI team will focus on identifying unsubmitted and partially tested kits from before 2001. They'll also test remaining unsubmitted and partially tested kits from previous projects. The SACI project will run through September of 2026. President Biden is once again giving relief to some Americans having to pay back student loans. The president canceled another $9 billion in student loan debt. It comes just days after payments resumed over the weekend following a three-year pause. The White House says it's conducting fixes to what it calls a broken student loan system. Since Biden has been in office, the White House says it's canceled $127 billion of debt for nearly 3.6 million borrowers. There's one major question on Capitol Hill tonight. Who will be the next Speaker of the House now that Kevin McCarthy is out? Nathaniel Reed breaks down the candidates. With Representative Kevin McCarthy out as Speaker of the House and not seeking another term for that position, the race for the new Republican Speaker of the House is heating up. In the running, Representative Steve Scalise, the Republican of Louisiana who has served as Majority Leader, a close ally to Speaker McCarthy, now seeking the top spot atop the Republican conference in the House of Representatives. Also running, Representative Jim Jordan, the Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. A number of names could also enter the race, including Representative Kevin Hearn, the Republican of Oklahoma, Representative of Tom Emmer, currently the House Majority Whip, has said he'd like to run for Majority Leader. A small group of Republicans is also calling on former President Trump to become the next Speaker of the House. However, that's unlikely, even though a Speaker of the House is not required by the Constitution to be a member of the House of Representatives. And next week, Republicans are expected to hear from possible candidates for Speaker in a candidate forum on Tuesday. A number of Republicans, though, have not yet said who they're backing to replace outgoing Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Well, right now, we need to come together and unify, and that's what this is all about. Um, we've got a, a lot of important things we need to do on spending on the border um, with respect to Ukraine, a lot of important decisions. And we need to sort this out in the next few days, certainly by early next week, get a speaker chosen and rock and roll. We've got a lot we need to do. When you have 221, when you have a handful in the family, you have a dis disagreement, then you've got to figure out how to get it all pulled back together again. But we're going to keep working. We're going to do it. We're going to unify and do what we need to do for the people. 
Though Republicans want someone who could potentially unify the Republican conference, that's going to be difficult given that Republicans have a very narrow majority in the House of Representatives. It took only eight Republicans to oust former Speaker McCarthy from his position. The former Speaker has made clear he is not planning on seeking the position again. Nathaniel Reed, Scripps News, Capitol Hill. The most unsettled weather looks like it's going to be happening right now tonight through tomorrow morning. Rain showers, periods of gusty winds. We'll show you where the biggest focus will that will be. As we get into Friday morning, we're going to have some very chilly temperatures regionally, mid 20s to mid 30s. But then the warm up follows as we start getting into the weekend and early next week. But signals of a change in that as well. We'll break down the seven day forecast for you in just a few minutes. Stick around for the complete forecast. A Park City man says quick response and excellent care gave him a second chance at life. Back in April, Sean McNeil suffered a heart attack in his home, but his wife and a local deputy were in the right place at the right time. Our Kelsey Boggs sat down with them to hear this incredible story. Sean ended up here at St. Vincent Healthcare in Billings, where he says he received top-notch care. He's back home in Park City now, but will forever be grateful for the team at St. V's that helped save his life. It was a normal day for me. That's what Sean McNeil, a 56-year-old father of four, was thinking on April 10th, 2023, until everything went dark. I went to work and came home and been doing a rowing machine, and I got on that and went in, and after I do my rowing, I usually go in and take a shower and that, and that was the last I remember. The moments that followed, told by his wife, Lori. I was in the kitchen getting ready for work the next day, and I just hear a crash, kind of a loud noise. And I thought, well, that's strange. Strange, but also a warning for what was happening. Then I heard it again. So then I went back to the bathroom and found him laying on the floor. She sprung into action, calling 911, then putting her training as an occupational therapist to work. Pulled him around so I could start CPR. You know, I did a lot of things wrong, but I did enough things right that we had a good outcome. Shortly after starting CPR, Stillwater County Sheriff's Deputy Dalen Richard arrived on scene with an AED in tow. And we shocked him twice, and then the ambulance showed up maybe 10 minutes after that, and then it was a third shock, and then that revived him. Lori and Richard saved Sean's life. I knew she'd do whatever it took, but to be able to be here and be thankful for it is another thing. Sean was transported to St. V's in Billings, where Dr. Simon Malte took over after Lori's quick thinking. His wife, she did CPR and then uh, enough so that uh, he was stable enough to bring uh, to bring him to the to the hospital. One of the primary things that we recognize is the amount of education, outreach, and things like that that we do in the community, this shows the benefit of that. Saturday's annual Saints Ball will raise money for cardiac, stroke, and trauma care to continue that work. It's the focus this year because we're responding to the community's needs, those life-saving needs in those areas, and we're really excited because we're celebrating 125 years. 125 years of life-saving care right here in Billings. You can't go anywhere in the country or probably in the world that you're going to have as good a care. I mean, the surgeons are excellent and the nurses I mean they cared for me like I was special to them. In Billings, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. St. Vincent Healthcare is also hitting on the importance of those emergency services because of the large region Billings providers serve. Billings is often the closest hospital for thousands across southern and eastern Montana so accessibility is key in the short and long term. It's important for us to be offering these critical care services here close to home so we can keep our patients around their support system and healing here um, in familiar space and not having to be flown out of state for their care. And again, St. V's annual Saints benefit is Saturday night at the Montana Pavilion. COVID vaccine cards are soon going to be a thing of the past. The white cards are a way for people to keep track of doses and provide vaccination status. The cards were even needed to enter certain establishments and countries during the pandemic. But now the CDC says it's no longer going to hand those out. Instead, people can download a digital copy of their vaccination status from their state health department. Still to come on the MTN 430 News on Q2, a true crowning achievement. We'll meet one Crow woman who has beaten breast cancer not once, but three times. And we'll hear what keeps her strong in the fight. And we'll also hear from a woman about a new postpartum depression pill. You may have heard of that. Well, she says it's changed her life. That story is coming up in just a bit.